Hey, 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 hey. What happened? I can't take these shoes anymore. Put your new shoes on. Wifey's got bad feet. Anyway, uh, let me say a couple of hellos. We have baby face grandmom is in the house. You are number one. You're right. You are right. And number two, guess so. Bill, the extraordinaire, Spielberg, must. Ron Holbert's in the house. Dick Tracy, how you doing? Uh, while Ron's here, he reminded me tonight at 8 o'clock on the Friday Night Live. Uh, me, my, I mean myself, Mike, and Dan are going to be on chatting about traffic and the importance of it. And I ain't talking about cars and trucks, okay? Uh, Vanessa D., Hello and welcome. Perpetual Zeppelin is in the house. Susan Bob, thanks for being here. You're always here. Uh, Ma M. Kelly, welcome. Coach Nate Harris is in the house. Tanya on passive. What what can I say? You already know. You are, you are. Amazing. Roy McBeal is in the house. He's always here. Thank you, Roy. James Sirari. I know I messed that up, but thank you for being here. Uh, Christina Dobbs. She's everywhere. She goes to everything. Corina Lance is here. Corina, Corina. Thank you for being here. And we have Annette Scott. Annette, thank you for being here. Gwen Mullet is here. Chris, the one and only Johnson, otherwise known as Hey, 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 Hey. Chris said hi, Don. Hi. Dan the Street, the man of steel, is in the house. Dan, you have an appointment at 8 o'clock tonight. Be there or be square. Karen Whitman, what's up? Linda Chapetta, always here, both of you. Thank you so much. Sherry Dershawa, welcome, welcome, welcome. Angela Lynn is here. Thank you, Angela. Nick, Monty has always been here. Red Redford. I knew him before we were here. <laughs> Red, uh, how do I say this without well, hurting your feelings? Tell your better half I said what's up, okay? Although you're a pretty cool chap yourself. David Switzer, what's up? <laughs> David's been around forever. Look at you with the emojis, man. You, you lost your mind. Uh, I'm passive, Robert Tantulo. Robert, thanks for being here. You love that unicorn. Don't you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring the unicorn out. He's in the other room, kicking holes in the wall. He hasn't been out for a while. Tim, the leprechaun, aka Captain Kurt, is in the house. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Raphael Jermaine. Raphael is one of the big leaders in Bahamas. He is definitely the cornerstone of the Bahamas. And trust me, one day you'll be very, very happy that you are. He's also a member of our original on Passive Nation. Uh, what do we got here? We're moving on down. We're moving on up. Timothy... Paradise, absolutely. Imagine having that last name. How could anything go wrong? How could anything go wrong? Carlos is in the house. Carlos, thanks for being here. Ann Long, seriously, I don't remember being an on-person without Ann Long. She's helped with everything. Leanne Bonnet, another one. 
people are running things from the goodness of their heart because nobody's getting paid. Not yet. Not yet. Get your baskets ready because we're about to go through the orchard. You know what I mean? We're about to pick up some apples. And guess what? We don't even have to go get them. They just got to fall in the bucket. When you empty the bucket, you got to fall in there again. Uh, Susan Bob, how you doing? Uh, who we got here? Iris Schmidt, welcome. Donna Hamlins, thank you for being here. I appreciate your support. My wife's got her new shoes on. She's got horrible feet, and she's the hardest worker in the house. She's the hardest worker anybody I know, actually. Pat Parent, love it. Been watching your lives, Pat. Very, very good. Very, very good. She pounds a diamond in the rough. Shirley Dotson's in the house. Always here. Debbie Morgan, you're always here too. Uh, Harvey DJ Green. Drop the mic, Harvey. Drop the freaking mic. Harvey's a great guy. I was talking to him one time on the phone. He's got that voice, man. He got the radio voice. William DeLome, the Marshmallow King, the man with the plan, is in the house. Alan Bourne, how you doing? X Blob. Boy, that don't sound right, but what it looks like to me. Rod Johnson's in the house. Rod's been around for a long time. Juanita Dali, uh, Steve Brown, I said hello. Let me move on down. Lystra's in the house. We can't get started without Lystra. Lystra, thank you for being here. Always an encouraging word for everyone, really. You know, you know how somebody walks in the room and turns on the camera and you automatically smile? Yeah. She has that gift. Most of you do, by the way. John, the big man with the plan with clippers in his hand, high and tight. You know it's always right. Solomon, wisdom coming out his pores, can say his S's and so much more. I tried to make a rhyme, man. Since I made a mistake, let me take it off of me right now. Chris has got a huge head. Hey, just kidding. Oh, just jumped. Gosh. I think I went back far enough. Close to me now. Yeah. yeah, I think I did home on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I have to come back where I was. Jeanette Butler, uh, Mars in the house of Mo. Uh, M. Both, welcome. Mike Polovina is in the house. I don't know why I said it like that. Sorry, Mike. Thank you for being here. Roy Willis is in the house. Angela Lunn, Crystal Johnson, Richard Toxin. Richard, I'm glad you can make it. Uh, David Cox Marketing, Ruth Pace. Ruth, you know what's up. Kevin, the big man, Rutledge, is uh, in the house. And a piece here. I know somebody else is close. Anyway, um, Leonard Edwards is in the house. Welcome. Wanda Cooper, thanks for always being here. Bernard uh, Brady, what's happening? Uh, Janet Bar Parkinson, hope I said that right. Spencer Carter's in the house. Sam Obing, Kathleen Shea. Top of Biddy Bale. Whoa, I hope I said that right. Tapa, that's a neat name. Tony the Monk 
is in the house. Tony the monk. What's happening, Tony? Karen Monsees. Um, Jermaine Dockery. There's Pam Turner. What's happening, Pam? Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're still cooking with grease here. Let me move on down. Trying to see new names here. Let me chip out. Jerry Price is here from Oklahoma City. Halish. HK. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Victoria, welcome. Beautiful name. Alicia McGuire is in the house. Daniel. Um, okay, people saying hello to each other. I think I've got everybody. David Angelic is in the house, the fisherman. Old fisherman. Oh, uh, what else we got? Okay, I'm done. I did my, I did my part. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm just kidding. Anyway, what I want to say is a little bit about tonight. Like I said, myself, Mike, and Dan will go over traffic. It was the, or it is the hardest thing to create. Getting traffic was one of the hardest things. And maintaining steady traffic. See, where people mess up is they think you get traffic one time, you're done. No, you got to constantly have it running in. And every time, it costs money, a lot of money. Joy Six is in the house. And my number one fan is probably there, too. Melvin, what's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? Red, I'll check out your live after this. I uh, went to bed late and got up really early and had to go back because it was a little too early. Anyway, uh, I wanted to talk about reading between the lines. What helped me... Uh, Mike and Dan, especially in the beginning when we were just on Passive Nation, which we're not, I'll always be on Passive Nation to the core, but <clears throat> we haven't <clears throat> marketed for a year and a half. And I mean marketing hard, not real hard, but steady. And when we did, in the beginning, maybe the couple months in, and I today is my... In a couple of a couple of days, I'll be here. I'll be on possum three years. Are you going? Believe it or not. Um, best decision I made business-wise or anything online ever. Not even close. Not even close. But anyway, after we uh, joined this amazing business, uh, it was one of our main ambitions is to meet whoever started it. And a lot of people said, well, what's it matter? It mattered to us. It mattered because between 15 and 18 years, all of us, right? We've been in many businesses and something would happen. And you never saw the guy behind the scenes. You never, you never heard him. You never... I always thought that was weird. Why? why? When sometimes you wonder, I think I know why. Because the business isn't going to last and they'll be gone. Well, we didn't, we didn't meet them right away, but we heard some tapes after I got in. I, I did not listen to any tapes from Mr. Mipar before we got in. Never. No, I don't think any of us did. Mike might have heard one a couple months earlier. But we got and I heard a few tapes, <clears throat> and uh, Mr. Mupara, I don't know if he'd want to hear this, but just fact, he's a genius. And when he talks, and 
the reason I'm saying this, I've met a I met a handful of people up in the stratosphere of brain wise like him. And uh, none quite at that level where you know anything's possible. You could think it, you could do it. Now I've heard that. I I I believe that by the way. But I I was in such a small scale, and that was part of my problem. I I, I believed, but not enough. And anyway, so we wanted to meet Ass. We met Ass, and then I would we would listen to him talk. And we knew that there was a much bigger story than the one he was telling. Much bigger story than the, than the story he was telling. So we would get together after a webinar with Ash and um, kind of had an Ash meeting, which was a uh, read between the lines. What do we really see? What is he... And I understand now why not everything could be blank, 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 blank. It's just knowing now, I, I understand it. Strategy, what can be said, what can't be said. There's so much of that. You know, you don't know that when you're when you're here and you're you're thinking small. But we got pretty good at it. Between the three of us, we went, I think. He said this, he said that, no, it's not that, that's not the emphasis. Then we'd say this, yeah, he said that, skip, he said that, skip. Whoa, this is what he means. And the picture became clear. So we did that for the last, well, up until today. And I realized, thank God that we took the time to do that. Because our light bulb, the unpassive glow, the oh wow went off fairly early. Albert Reed, how you doing? So, and that was from reading between the lines. If you go to, and that's just in playing a game. Um, certain things can come out at certain times or he can allude to things but you got to read between the lines if you go to the if you go to the uh updates or listen to this video over and over and over but if you go to the updates the one peter does red's done they're both very good at it either way it doesn't matter but you go to you go to peter's update and you read each line blah 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 blah, blah. don't do that Read it out and take keywords in the order. And I want to tell you something else. The most powerful words he'll say more than in one meeting. Those are extremely powerful words. If you hear it more than one meeting, or if he says it more than one time in a meeting, and sometimes that word by itself, you're going, why does he keep saying that? But if, if you put it together, like right now, I, I don't know how to speak Japanese. But when I was in Japan for a month or two months, I started to put it together and started to understand what they were saying. Much better than I could understand how to say it. But I want people to read between the lines. Go back to the last three or four notes. And if you did, even where you think we might be, and you have a very good imagination, my imagination is absolutely psycho. I have no problems thinking and believing. But there's times when I go to a meeting, I'm going, oh, my God. I'm even looking at everybody else to see if they're seeing what I'm seeing or hearing what I'm hearing. And I could tell some people don't hear it. I just want to shake them. Do you hear that? You know, did you hear that? Now, and only a handful that I see where they go right away. Now, the next day, and I'll tell you what helps. 
the next day when Red Redford does an update. Like even me and Red talk. Marty, I see it this way. And I go, I think you're right. And then I'll say something and Red goes, I think you might be right. Red does his live. Now you're spreading out what we believe. Are we 100% every time? No. But 80% will blow your socks off. And whatever percentage were not right, it's not bad. It's not like the 20% are so bad that it just makes the whole story not true. It doesn't. It, it works. Now, Mike Ellis, same thing. Mike Ellis, I don't know where we got it or where he got it, but together, a handful of people somewhere got the Ask Me Far Dakota ring out of their uh, Cracker Jack box or something. And when he's talking, I, I feel fortunate because I can listen and I'll get off the uh, meeting and talk to Dan. Uh, there's a few people. I can talk to him right after the meeting. Dan, uh, Mike, Red, um, just other people. Some people that Chris, Robin, Julie, there's people that I talk to every day. And as you're talking, it's so funny because almost everyone has a little nugget, right? A little, and then when you put it together, it's like, whoa, not only was I pretty close, but it was bigger than I thought it was. So, Please take the time until until this explosion happens and it's permitted and what goes on and ask and sit down and go, here's how things went. Because to me, there's a novel in the journey of unpassing. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. The characters, the story what was said, how it was um, deciphered, what 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 was behind the scenes with us the, during the time that we might be smiling, how much headache was he really having? How many arrows was he dodging? To me, that's, look, it's bad days and good days, but it's fascinating, right? And all said and done, you got it right there, Tim. It'll be historical. Everybody looks at some something one-dimensional. If I click that switch, the light comes on. I'm not that guy. I, I, I want to know, how did we get here? I don't need to know how it's done. I'm not, not at that damn level. But I, I'm fascinated on what people did. What were they thinking to dive into something that big? And I'll truthfully say, all the stuff I do, know, all the things that I knew, know history and all that, and I'm fascinated with, I'm fascinated with people. I'm fascinated with people that are different. But even that, I can't look back in history in the industrial age and see anybody that wanted to crack open an egg the size of on passing. Never. Ne never saw it, not, not in history, because it's not one egg. It's multiple eggs. And, and not only that, he's not going by a blueprint. Well, they did this, I'm going to do this, and I'll do it like, no, because they didn't do it. He can't look over there or over there and then make it better. Yeah, the products he can. But on passive, the whole ecosystem can't copy off anybody. Nobody did it. And it's not one product in the long run, it's hundreds. And then whatever's floating around his head, because that's what he loves doing. Thinking of ideas to make mankind better. 
and the magic word, adding value. Let's go back to value. You guys all remember it's been in this for a month, even two years, three years, some people more than me. He brought up value a lot in the beginning. Value, 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 value. I'm thinking, where's uh, the meat and potatoes? Where's where's the money? Then I realized that is the money. That's the power. Taking something that's already there, redoing it from, from the bottom up, re, redesigning that, everything from the bottom up, putting a syringe in it, adding a little bit of AI, and then dropping the price to an un, unbelievable amount. And another thing I was thinking about, reading between the lines and talking to so many people, because talking to people makes you think, right? I'm sorry we're just chatting, but just pretend you're in my living room because I, I feel like doing this right now. But think about this. When somebody says about competition and all this stuff, keep in mind, and I've said this before, go to uh, a page builder, a click funnel, and there's many of them. But go, go to three or four of them, and they always have all of them lined up. And they have 10 items or 15 items. And then the winner has 20 items. Oh, I want that one. But usually, the guy with the more items, it's going to cost you a lot more. And with all of them, the cost you see is not what it costs. You know that. You know that when you get in a business and you... Uh, you go after ClickFunnel, for example, and it's $49.95. When you're done, you could be two or three hundred dollars a month to get the page you really need. Did they say that in the front? Is it anywhere in the competition? Anywhere in the so-called value? Nowhere. It's hidden. It's a hidden cost. And they walk you down this rabbit hole so far. And it's so tight, you can't back out. You're constantly buying these little pieces. Hey, before you go, you know, you need this and you buy it. Oh, before you go, you need, okay, next thing you know, you should be all set. Now, why did you pick this item to begin with? It was $49.95 and the other one was 70 and this one had more stuff. Here's the reality. This is now $350, $400 a month. You didn't know what you were getting. You got it down. You feel you almost feel obligated to pay for it because you've walked through this thing so far, grabbing every freaking carrot like an idiot. And now you wind up with a package. You still don't know how to use it. Some stuff I did know. I'm talking about me when I first got in. Then you don't know how to use it. And then what do they do? Well, we can set up someone to help you do it. Really? What a great company. How much? $250. Well, that's a bargain. Okay, idiot. You started at $49.95 because you can afford that. You're now up to five or $600 for something you never saw in the beginning. Never saw it. Is that ethical? Is that the right way to be? Not for me. And value is not only value cost, which is an unbelievable thing. Value is being honest. Value is being ethical. Now, will I, will I go through all that in my head two, three years ago? No. Mr. Mufara and the company made me think. Mr. Mufara and the company made me think. And talking to you guys always makes me think of a bigger and brighter picture. And by the way, even if you get the decoder ring and you can read between the lines, 
if you take the time, anyone could do it. Do not think it's me and you can't. I never believe that. Anybody starts up a sentence with, well, I can't. I don't want to hear that crap. Because as soon as you say that, guess what? You can't. Take the time. Follow people that already got the code. Listen to what they're saying, and you'll get the code. It's not It's not hidden. Try to get it. Try to get there. It's a lot more fun. You know, When you read between the lines, it brings you up to a whole new level. You're on a whole new platform when you can read between the lines. Talk to Red. I'll take my word for it. Talk to Mike Ellis. Go to Dan Strait. Go to people that have are fortunate enough to start reading between the lines. And there's a lot of people right here that I'm looking at that can read between the lines. I know for a fact. I talk to them. They know. And how can you tell when you're having a conversation to get it? Die hard on passive people can read between the lines. Different levels, but you can read. And guess what? Even when you get fairly good at it, we still only know 10%. So be happy. And if you're not sure how to be happy, there's a song about being happy. It'll cheer you up. <clears throat> anyway, to go along about reading between the lines, try it. Take your time. Start doing it. Um, I don't want that. Th now there's a fine line. Hold on. Here's another thing I want everybody to do. And I want you to pass this on. I trust all of you. If you, because there's so many webinars and there's so many experts, I use that loosely. There's so many experts. When somebody makes a statement, I don't care who it is, besides Ashley Farr, okay? When somebody makes a statement in a webinar and you get this feeling for that much time, you get the, the, this kind of thing. I don't know if that's... If you get... Uh, I'm not sure that's right. It's probably not. Question the person. Are you sure that's right? Was that said in a webinar and I missed it? And if the person's a true leader, he'll tell you why I think it is. I think sometimes people make statements and I try to always say, if I'm not 100% sure, I'll say, I believe it's that way. And people that know me, they know I'm that way. And people that even train, that might know 99.9999, gold standard. If they're a true leader and they're not that one tenth of 100%, they will say, from my experience and the way I read between the lines, this is what I believe it is. And that's important because we have 50,000 webinars, which we shouldn't. Everybody throws, <clears throat> throws their little bit in, a little bit of a, a little bit of a twist. And all, with all respect with everyone, people shouldn't add a little twist. Unless you say, I believe it's this, or I believe it could be this. That's fine. That's okay. But we have a lot of new people that don't know, and if you make a statement without using that little clause, they take you right. Or if you say the company's using this and the company's going to do this, it's almost impossible that anybody can make that statement, 100%. So anyway, try to be, try to be truthful. And I really want everybody to hold everybody else up on a higher standard. Because I get a lot of reports. This guy said this, this guy said that, this, this woman said this, this. And... I don't automatically think, oh, it must have happened. I don't know that. I go and check. But if you're in a meeting, I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's senior so-and-so, captain so-and-so, doctor so-and-so. They talk, and they make a statement that is no way out. 
it's going to be this way, and this is what they're going to do. Question them on it. My sister Susie McCray's in the house. Yeah, there you go. Susie said it. My understanding is. You never hear Susie make a bold-faced statement. Never. And sometimes she knows. She's still very cautious. And I try to be. And I got a big mouth. Don't say anything, Chris. I don't need to add anything to that. So, but try that. And hold people on a higher standard. Nobody, nobody, nobody is bigger than I'm passing. No one person. Hold them to hold them accountable for what's coming out of their mouth. Don't be nasty. I'm not saying be nasty. I've been nasty sometimes, and I apologize. Ask anybody I was nasty to. I'm just kidding. Uh, but most of the time, if I'm up, not if I'm direct with somebody, um. It's because I care that they get it right, or at least admit they don't know 100%. Anyway, starting now, let's read between the lines. Let's think the best in everyone. And if somebody's, if somebody has the nerve to train in a meeting, they should have the nerve to be questioned. If they make a statement with no leeway, this is what it is. If that's the case, I would question it. If you get that gut feeling, that means you might know something he doesn't know or she doesn't know, and you should question him on it. Anyway, I have talked for 37 minutes, and I try to add what? Value if I can. So I recommend... Everyone join John White and Bill Must. Everyone join John White and Bill Must in his in Chris's life. Because two people is just not enough. I love the guy. He needs your support. I'm just kidding. Everybody knows Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson is involved and Amazing. Does he get on my nerves? Oh, my God, yeah. He gets on my nerves if I'm winning pool, and he gets on my nerves if I'm losing. Doesn't matter. Gets on my nerves. Anyway, I'll see you all, and God bless.